Uh, so, okay, our first talk is from Professor Zhong Chongye. Professor Zhong Chongye currently is a full professor with the Department of well, Engineering and Mathematical Science and Korea Advanced Institute of Science and Technology, or CAIS, at South Korea. Professor Ye is an IEEE Fellow and EMBS Distinguished Lecturer. He's a leading expert in biomedical and computer imaging inverse problems and machine learning. In particular, his current research focuses on theory and application of deep learning for biomedical imaging reconstruction. Professor Ye has done a great service to our community in biomedical imaging and signal processing. He has been a social editor for several renowned journals in this area, uh, such as IEEE Transaction on Medical Imaging, IEEE Transaction on Competition Imaging, and he has been a senior associate editor for Signal Processing Magazine. I first know Professor Ye is when I'm attending uh, the IMA Competition Imaging Workshop uh, last year at Minnesota, where Professor Ye has delivered a great talk on uh, geometric understanding of a supervised and unsupervised deep learning for biomedical imaging reconstruction, which I were really amazed and impressed. Um, and when about brainstorming this uh, workshop on deep learning and low dimensional structures, Professor Ye has given his uh, great support for sponsoring and advocating this workshop, uh, acting as a chair uh, of the computational imaging TC community. And I really appreciate his uh, help. So today, Professor Ye will give his uh, talk on his new work titled Optimal Transport Cycle Again at the end for unsupervised learning in inverse problems. Uh, let's welcome Professor Ye. Share my screen again. Okay, so anyway, thank you much for the kind introduction. Actually, in case there is a connection, uh, this connection, I actually embed my voices in my presentation file. So I just presented it. And but because this is a PPT, so if you have any question in between, please stop me that I can actually stop and answer your question anytime. Okay. Thanks organizers for inviting me to this wonderful workshop. I'm Jung Chaye from CAIS. In this presentation, I'd like to share our recent research works on optimal transport at the end and psych again for unsupervised learning in inverse problem. In recent years, thanks to the type of CPU technology and medical big data, deep learning has become the mainstream theme in medical imaging area. For example, from fundus imaging for diabetic diagnosis, skin cancer diagnosis, ophthalmology diagnosis using OCT and diagnosis using chest X-ray, deep neural network technology is now achieving the similar or even superior performance than that of the doctors. Deep tech companies has been emerging in many medical imaging areas. In addition, Deep learning based algorithms has become a light state of art technologies uh, from beyond the scope of the diagnosis to the areas such as image segmentation, image registration, and etc. This kind of technology is mainly focused on the diagnosis and analysis, which means it starts from the generated images, and by processing the images using the standard computer vision technologies, we are interested in finding the segmentation or detection or even the diagnosis. However, listen to the trend in the deep neural network is inverse problem. Here, instead of starting with the image data, we start with the low data, and using the deep neural network, we are interested in the forming high resolution and high quality. One thing we are quite proud of is that we have made a leading contribution to make the deep learning approach become the mainstream in medical image reconstruction field. For example, in 2016, AAPM Lodo City Grand Challenges, we present the world's first deep learning algorithm and received an award. In fact, this research has changed the research trend in medical image reconstruction field. As a result, within just two years, Canon and GE commercialized a deep learning based city reconstruction algorithm. It is unprecedented 
that the result of academic research is uh, rapidly being put into practical use. This technology is usually based on the fit for neural network approaches. Here, CNN performs a direct inverse operation, and this is most simplest and fast reconstruction method. However, for this type of supervised learning approaches, we need a lot of training data with the matched pairs. However, what happens if we do not have any labor data for the training? Can you still train the neural network for the inverse problem? In fact, this type of unpaired learning or unsupervised learning is critical for many inverse problems. For example, let's think about the load of CT for the cardiac imaging application. Some phase are high dose, the other phase is a low dose. But we cannot utilize high dose phase for the training of the low dose because the heart is moving in between, so there is no matched pairs. Let's think about the matter artifact removal in the dental state application. Here, in order to uh, train the neural network in a supervised learning way, we need the matched data without matter and with the data. This is not possible. Let's think about the remote sensing application using the satellite imaging. Many of the satellite imaging sensors has an artifact. As you can see here, like a striking artifact or horizontal artifact as you can see here. However, it's impossible to obtain the image without the artifact at the same time. So there is no matched pairs available. For example, in the blind decomposition problem microscopic imaging, we usually measure the blurry images and the goal is to estimate the unknown high resolution images. In practice, it's not possible to obtain the two matched pairs. So in this kinds of approaches, we need, a, uh, we need a method to train the neural network without matched data. This picture is taken from Professor Yan Lacun's presentation material, one of the godfathers of artificial intelligence. He compared the artificial intelligence problem to a cave. Reinforcement learning is like a cherry on a cake. Supervised learning is just icing on the cake. And the body of cake is an unsupervised learning problem. Therefore, we can see that unsupervised learning problem is the most important research topic of artificial intelligence. One of the, uh, one of the classical approaches for the unsupervised learning for inverse problem is penalized least squares. Penalized least square minimizes the cost function which composed of the two terms. The first one is data fidelity or likelihood term, and the second term is prior term or regularization term. The goal is to minimize the sum of the two terms and try to make the best trade-off between the two. For example, the classical approach like a of regularization or total variation and compressed sensing belong to this classes. Here, the prior term is usually designed in a top-down manner based on the mathematical principle. However, there are several downsides of these approaches. In these approaches, if we solve this problem on particular measurement, those knowledge cannot be transferred to another problem. Therefore, this is not an inductive approach. Another downside of these approaches is computation is very expensive. You need to solve this problem for every measurement. On the other hand, model-based or plug-in player using CNN model is a deep neural network approaches. This has been quite often used and investigated in late in recent years. Here, the first term corresponds to likelihood term and data fidelity term, like a penalized least square. And the second term is instead of using the top-down prior model, we are interested in using the CNN-based regularization term here. Now, QX is works as a uh, denoiser, so because of that, this regulation term is penalizing the noise term. So one of the nice things about this one is this neural network Q set X is not complete, even though it's not completely unsupervised neural network, but still we can actually use relatively small training data set. However, one of the downsides of this one is even though we use the deep neural network, the reconstruction algorithm is still iterative. We need to solve these kinds of iterative algorithms as you can see in these equations. 
One of the well-known unsupervised learning approaches is a DBMC prime model published at CBPR in 2018. Unlike the conventional supervised learning approaches, no training data is required here. Instead, the image you want to obtain is models as an output of the neural network Q theta. The data is created through the given mapping physics or sensing matrix H. The goal is to restore the image by solving the optimization problem to meet the data fidelity. This is the advantage of completely unsupervised learning that does not require any training data, but it has the disadvantage that the computation amount is quite high, even higher than the existing model-based strategy approaches, because the optimization problem needs to be solved for each given method. The question is, is any unsupervised field for convolution neural network approaches for inverse problem? In order to answer this question, we need to review the optimal transport theory. Optimal transport is concerned about transporting one probability measure to another one. For example, let mu denote the probability measure in the sample space X, and nu denote another measure in Y. Then transportation map transport measures mu to another one nu. This operation is represented by T sharp, which is often called the push forward over measure. Formally, push forward over measure mu by a function f is defined using the inverse mapping as shown in equation one. However, this is a nonlinear operation. Among this original formulation of the optimal transport as defined by the minimization problem of average transportation costs with respect to the transportation map T under the push forward constraint. However, this problem is difficult to solve due to the nonlinearity of the push forward constraint. To address this problem, Contour boots relax the optimal transportation problem by a probabilistic formulation. Here, instead of directly minimizing with respect to the transportation map T, contour root estimates the joint probability distribution phi, which minimizes the average transportation cost. This allows mass splitting and leads to the linear programming problem for the case of discrete measure. In fact, Country which got the Nobel Prize in economy due to his discovery of the linear programming approach for the optimal transportation problem. Although optimal transportation problem is difficult to solve, for the case of transport between the Gaussian measures, we can obtain the cross form formulation of the transportation map. For example, if the measure mu is given by the normal distribution with the mean and mu, and covariance sigma u. And if the target distribution nu is defined by the normal distribution with mv and sigma v, the transformation map between the two is given by the equation t at the top. Furthermore, when the two Gaussian distribution is iid, then it can be simplified, uh, simplified by the equation at the center. This implies form of the optimal transport is closely related to so-called adaptive instant normalization or ADA-IN. In computer vision literature, ADA-IN was proposed for the image star transfer. For example, image that the content is changed to an image with a given star. For this purpose, ADA-IN convert the mean and covariance of the features using the formula at the top where the feature U is from the content image and the feature V is from the target star images. You can see that this other in transform is equivalent to the optimal transport between two IID Gaussian distributions. Another important advantage of contour formulation is that it allows a dual formulation. For example, the original primer OT formulation tried to estimate the joint distribution under the constraint of marginal distribution. The dual problem is formulated with respect to the marginal distribution, which is much simpler. To allow such simplification, the dual tried to maximize with respect to so-called contrary potential and its C-transform. 
which is defined at the bottom. In fact, this C transform is trivial for the special case of transportation course. Otherwise, we need a trick to handle this. Based on the standing of the optimal transfer, we can now study the geometry to generate advisory network or GAN. These pictures are taken from Twitters by Ian Goodfellow, the first creator of GAN. As you can see, in just four years, you can clearly see how realistic the fake faces created through the GAN are becoming. This is a picture of a common metaphor when asked how GAN make a realistic face. In other words, when the banknote criminals works hard to make money that is indistinguishable from real money, the police do research to create more accurate way of distinguishing. Then the banknote criminal make more precise counterfeit bill. If this is repeated, counterfeit bills become more accurate which may be in the skin in this English. What is most surprising mathematically is that this gap principle is another way of expressing the problem of minimizing the distance between the published distribution as shown in this picture. That is, in finding G, a transform that converts Gaussian noise distributions into phase represented point in X. The problem of minimizing the distance between this transport property distribution and the empirical distribution can appear as a GAN. There are several ways of measuring the statistical distance. For example, F divergence is defined as a top equation. Depending on the function F, various forms of GAN formulation appear. The, this general formulation is often called the F-GAN. However, this F-divergence is not a real matrix as it does not uh, satisfy the symmetry or triangular inequality. Instead, Bashestan-1 matrix, a Bashestan matrix is a real matrix that satisfies all the properties of the matrix. For example, Bashestan-1 matrix is defined as a W1 in this equation which is in fact the minimum average transportation cost using the norm as a transportation cost. One of the nice properties of Bashestan one matrix is that it can be equivalently represented by a simple job formulation. Note that Bashestan matrix arises from the optimal transport using matrix as a transportation cost. One of the nice things about this norm is that its C transform our contrary potential can be simply presented by its negative function. Therefore, there is only one function per field that needs to be maximized. In fact, this implication is true for all one Lipset function per field. If we use the Bashestan one matrix for the statistical distance minimization problem in this picture, then it's dual lead to the so-called Bashestan GAN. Here, the contrary potential bar phi is in fact the discriminator and the transform GG is the generator. To impose a one lips con uh, constraint, one could use one lips penalty term as you can see in this, big, uh, in this equation. Now the discriminator try to maximize the loss, whereas the generator try to minimize the loss. By repeating this competition, we can make the generator more realistic. From now on, we'll discuss how this optimal transfer theory can be used to design unsupervised learning approaches for inverse problems. This is based on our main theoretical contribution and its validation using various real-world applications. For example, in the case of converting a zebra to horse, or a photo to pictures of Mone, Goho, Sejan, and Yukiko. This problem is an unsupervised learning problem without matched pairs. To solve this problem, second was proposed. The basic idea of second is to overcome the shortcoming of the supervised learning that requires a pair data. 
By learning a generator that makes a zebra into host and a generator that makes a host into a zebra at the same time. And when input data pass through the two generators, it should return to the original one. This self-consistency is a key element of Sekigan. Our discovery that Sekigan is used for unsupervised learning in Nimbus problem was motivated by the following low-dose Sekigan denoise problem. In fact, the reason I paid attention to this problem was from the joint research with the cardiologist. In the case of cardiac CT, images of several cardiac phase are obtained simultaneously and the structure of the heart is investigated at each phase to, for the diagnosis. At this time, if all the cardiac phase images are obtained at routine dose, the amount of radiation exposure becomes extremely high. Therefore, majority of the phase obtained in low dose. On the other hand, only a small set of the phase obtained at routine dose. The question the doctor asked was, could you learn neural network to remove low dose images using high dose phase images. However, this problem is very challenging since the heart moving between the two phases, so supervised learning is not possible. Therefore, a supervised learning technique was to be needed to solve this problem. This is the structure of Cyclone we proposed in 2018 to solve this problem in cardio cardiac CT. Domain A is for the low dose images, domain B is for the routine dose images, and two neural networks from A to B and B to A were trained using second architectures. As a result, as shown in these pictures, we show that high quality images can be accurately reconstructed from the low dose images by removing only noises without changing the structures of heart. Motivated by this result, we try to understand the geometry of the Sekigan. Recently, we showed that the mathematical structures of Sekigan can be extended from the mathematical structure of GAN we described before. In other words, when there is a space X of measurement data and a domain X for the images, which are not, which are not matched to each other, one generator G learned the inversion from the measurement data to the image domain, whereas another generator F learned the transform from the image to the measurement. As mentioned earlier, if the distance between the transform probability and the actual empirical distributions are minimized at the same time in both X and Y spaces, Sekigan can be derived. What's even more surprising is that the function going from the image to the measurement F is known or partially known in many imaging problems, which result in the much simpler Sekigan architect. For example, the distance in the image domain space X can be represented by the first equation, whereas the distance in Y can be given by the bottom equation. However, one thing to note is that the joint distribution that minimizes the two distance can be different. Therefore, our goal is to find the joint distribution that minimizes the sum of the transportation costs at the same time. Specifically, the top equation is our formulation of the optimal transport for the unsupervised learning in inverse problem. In the transport cost, the first term is the data fidelity term, and the second term is considered as a regression term that penalizes inverse pass consistency. Our primary unsupervised learning formulation for inverse problem is done to minimize the average cost with respect to all combination of image and measurement pairs. And the goal is to find the joint distribution that minimizes average cost. You can see that this formulation is similar to the penalized least square at the bottom. However, the penalized least square tries to estimate one instant of X from a given measurement Y by minimizing the cost Whereas our formulation estimates the joint distribution that minimizes average cost for all combination of an X and Y. Therefore, we can see that our optimal transportation formulation is considered as a stochastic generalization of penalized risk square. 
Yeah, another important contribution about Wong is that the dual formulation leads to the cyclic gain formulation, which is composed of the cyclic consistence term and the discriminator term. In particular, the cyclic consistent term is written as shown in the lab, and the discriminate term is shown in the light. Here, one of the important observations is that the four generator Fe in the cyclic consistency and the discriminate term arise from the Ford operator. Therefore, depending on the knowledge of the Ford physics, the generator can be known, partially known, or unknown. This is very important implication, as will be explained later. Moreover, the discriminated term is currently in the form of Bicherstein gain. In fact, the derivation of this dual formulation is a little bit different, but very interesting in its own. So I'd like to explain it in more detail. First, the K theta H is the average transportation cost from the primary problem, where the transportation cost is composed two terms from forward and backward mapping. Here we simply present for the operator as H rather than F phi. Now phi uh, dot is the optimal joint measure. From here, we can now obtain the contributive dual formulation in terms of potential and their seed transform. The reason we have one of two in this equation is from that there are two forms of contributive dual formulation depending on which side we are taking for the seed transform. Now, the last equation arises from the definition of the seed. Now, instead of computing the cross from seed transform, our main trick is to find the upper and lower bound. Note that there is this if x and if y, if you look at the definition of the seed transform. To derive the upper bound, we choose g theta y instead of x and hx instead of y. By plugging this, we can obtain an upper bound. The reason we chose this is to remove one term in the transportation cost. In fact, by performing this, we can obtain an upper bound which composed of LOT, the discriminant term, and L cycle, the cyclic consistency. To derive the lower bound, we are now interested in obtaining the lower bound of, for the term in the, in the circles. Here, one Lipschitz property of the contrary to potential is critical. Using the one Lipschitz constant uh, condition, we can obtain the lower bound at the bottom. If we replace the first circle with the top inequalities and the second one with the bottom inequalities, the inflow operation is no more necessary and we arrive at the lower bound, which are only composed of discriminant. Now the final trick is a realization that the primal problem can be equivalently represented by a constant a constraint optimization problem under the constraint on the psychic consistence term. If you convert this one to an unconstrained form using Lagrangian multiplier, we end up with the psychic consistent uh, psychic gain formulation. Therefore, we can conclude that the psychic gain formulation is a dual form of the optimal transport problem, which is a statistical distance minimization in both X and Y spaces simultaneously. Another important advantage about formulation is that it leads to the various simplification. For example, figure A shows the standard cyclic and architecture, which is composed of two generators, G set and F gamma, and two discriminator, which are all implemented by neural network. If we do not know the relationship of the cyclic gain and auto formulation of the unsupervised learning for inverse problem, we have to use architecture A for all inverse problems. However, cyclic gain training is quite complicated since we need to train four different neural networks at the same time. So if one of the neural networks does not converge, all the training fails. Therefore, we found that this architecture works in some problem. However, it does not work in many other inverse problems as it will be shown later. On the other hand, from a mathematical understanding of the relationship between optimal transport and cyclic gain, we can now derive various forms of the cyclic gain. For example, if we know that the four, the forward operator is just a linear com convolution, which is true for the convolution problem, then the four generator can be replaced by a linear layer. Because a linear layer can be trained quickly, 
the train of the new architecture with one deep generator and linear layer can be trained very easily and produce very stable solution as we will shown later. Furthermore, furthermore, in some inverse problem, the folder operator is completely known as will be shown in the later in the compressing MRI problem. In this case, the full generator doesn't need to be trained and the competition with the disk community is not necessary. Therefore, we have a much simpler architecture shown in figure C with only one pair of generator and discriminators. On the other hand, if the Ford physics is not known, we have to estimate all using the neural network, which lead to the standard cyclic architecture in D with two pairs of generator and discriminators. In the following, we show the three special cases of our cyclic architecture. The first case is for the deconvolution microscopy problem, which measured the blurry image through the point spread function of the optics. In this case, blur, uh, uh, blurs appears as a linear convolution in most cases. So the data fidelity term in the transportation cost is determined by the linear operator as shown in the top equation. As a result, in implementing our cyclic on one generator, is a deep neural network, and the other is by a linear layer, which can be complemented using the convolution. As a result, the number of unknowns in the network is dramatically reduced, making the learning much more simple and... Sorry, one second, sorry. The first case is for the deconvolution microscopy problem, which measured the blurry image through the point spread function of the optics. In this case, blur, uh, uh, blurs appears as a linear convolution in most cases. So the data fidelity term in the transportation cost is determined by the linear operator as shown in the top equation. As a result, in implementing our cyclic on one generator is a deep neural network and the other is by a linear layer, which can be complemented using the convolution. As a result, the number of unknowns in the network is dramatically reduced, making the learning much more simple and stable. In the case of microtube fluorescence imaging, you can see here, you can see that our result in the last column is restored to high quality while maintain, maintaining the structures of the microtube accurately. Here, the network input is a blood microscopic imaging in the leftmost column. Also, what you see to the right is looking at the uh, side image of the 3D sagittal direction, and you can see the high resolution image restored. On the other hand, the commercial software such as AutoCon supervised learning with AutoCon as a ground truth images, or conventional cyclotron can recover the complete structure of microtubule and result in the fragmented structures. In the second case, I show you how to restore high quality images from the, from the X-ray MRI using our cyclic GAN structures. The things to pay attention here is that only a single pair of generator discriminators is unnecessary. Especially in the case of the generator that goes to an analysis image, this is an, a deterministic generator that does not require training because it can be explained using a deterministic deterministic downsampling pattern and free transform. As a result, you don't need a discriminator to compete with this generator. So we only need one discriminator and one generator pairs. As a result, we can train the neural network much more effectively and stably. Here's the result of applying this method to actual knee MRI data from the fast MRI Chinese data set. The one on the far left is the image with the earlier scene from four times acceleration factor. In the second column is a supervised learning result, and the third column is a conventional cyclic result. And the last, uh, the first column is our proposed method. When using the existing cyclic GAN, the earliest pattern was not completely removed, but you could see that our method produced high resolution images very similar to the supervised learning. In spite of that, our method is unsupervised learning approaches. Now, the third case is unsupervised load of CT denoising problem for the cardio application, which we discussed before. 
In this case, it's quite difficult to find the physical operator that explains the path from the high dose to the low dose cases. This is because it has a number of nonlinear physical phenomena such as photon starvation, beam hardening, scattering, and etc. It is almost impossible to describe the physics using closed form equation. Therefore, in this case, the mapping itself is configured as a neural network so that it can be learned from the training data. As a result, two generated two discriminators are necessary. In addition, we should make no changes even if a high dose image is accidentally entered to the input of the generator. Therefore, identity loss is required. This is a problem of the converting from low dose to high dose that we showed earlier. In the different images, you can see that the only noise pattern can be observed without affecting the actual structure. This is a result of an aberration study. When using only GAN without using cyclic GAN loss, there was a problem that the image was distorted so naturally as seen in the rightmost column, which is indistinguishable from actual lesion. The same thing happened even if identity loss is not used. However, if we use a proposed cyclic GAN structures, you can see that there was no distortion of the reconstructed image. But what if a high dose image was accidentally put into the input of the network? This situation usually happens in a clinical environment since this the noising is proposed as a batch test without user interventions. A method does not change as in the sec uh, second column, which is desirable. However, you can see that if there is no identity loss or, or only GAN is used, then the artificial structure occurs. Based on this kind of discussion so far, we found that our optimal transportation derived formulation for the unsupervised learning inverse problem lead to flexible architecture that is ideally suitable for many real world applications. However, as discussed before, the last case with the two parallel deep generator discriminators are often difficult to try and requires many training uh, data sets as well, since it composed of four deep neural networks. From now on, we introduce our recent proposal to address these issues. Here we demonstrate that even for these cases, the knowledge of optimal transport helped to simplify the cyclic architecture. The key idea for such a simplification is the use of adaptive instant normalization or other in, which we discussed before. First, the last side figure shows the vanilla cyclic architecture, which is composed of two pairs of generators and discriminators. On the other hand, the right side is our new network architecture, which is composed of one generator with a small network app, which generates other in holes. We call that the other end is an optimal transport between two IID Gaussian distributions. Therefore, rather than using two different generators, our main innovation is to design each one of them as an autoencoder followed by optimal transport between two IID Gaussian distributions. Then depending on the IID code, the composite generator can become GYX or GXY. This is a network architecture of our composite generator. The top one is a standard unit with the instant normalization layer. In the bottom blue box is other encode generator, which generates a target other encode that can be used at the instant normalization layer. One key point here is that the other encode generator is very simple architecture, even though we show that in a bulky blue box to, uh, to show the inside clearly. In fact, the actual number of additional weight and flops is very, uh, very minimal, as we can, as we will be discussed later. Furthermore, at the test phase, this other encode generator is no more necessary because we just need a generated code, which is very simple numbers. In fact, the idea of using other encode generator was inspired by StarGAN. 
The beautiful ghost face you can see here is, is a fake face created by Stargan. Throughout the use of other encode generator across a multiple layer shown in the white, a fake face was created that was uh, totally in the skin spot from the real face. In fact, this is one of the most popular papers that received the most attention in CBPR in 2019. We applied this idea to the low dose CT denoising problem. Now, this example shows how our switchable psychic gun generator works. Once the neural network is trained, all we need is a unit generator and two other encodes. No more other encode generator is necessary. Now, the top layer, uh, top low, the input is low dose imaging. If you use the other encode C app that convert to high dose, the noise can be removed. However, if you use other encode C Y, the network produce noise images. Now, in the second row, the input image is high dose image X. If it uses other encode C Y, then the network add the noise. On the other hand, if it uses other encode C X, the network convert the image to the domain X, which is high dose image. From this, we can see that. Our single generator can be used as a forward and backward mapping by simply changing the other encode at the inference phase. This is important. Now, table two shows that the number of trainable parameters for the vanilla cyclic GAN and our switchable cyclic GAN. We can see that the other encode generator F is much lighter so that the upper number of parameter become nearly half of the original cyclic gap. Furthermore, table three shows that network complexity. The complexity of other encode generator F is negligible compared to the other network architectures. In the bottom, we show the PSNR and SIM values of low dose CT denoising by changing number of training data size. As you can see here, our switchable cyclic network, which is in the blue lines, provide consistent improvement in performance throughout the training data size. This clearly indicates that the reduction of the network parameter led to the much stable and accurate training. Yet another important advantage of our switchable cyclic GAN is that it provides real-time interpolation along the optimized transport path at the inference phase. Note that the other end is optimal transport between the two IID Gaussian distribution. So for the interpolation, instead of using the target mean and variance, if we could use the interpolated mean and variance, we can generate the optimal, uh, uh, we can generate the images along the optimal transport path. In the top row, you can see the resulting the noising performance. As alpha goes to zero, more denoising effect is absorbed. What's more important thing here is that the, the difference image in the denoising pattern along the optimal trans uh, transport path are feature specific. For example, a large alpha value is only noise at the background is removed first, but as alpha becomes smaller, the cardiac wall area starts to be denoised. On the other hand, if we just interpret in the image domain, as shown in the bottom row, the denoising effect are uniform across all the images without feature-specific denoising effect. Now, the feature-specific denoising effect by other end is very important from a clinical perspective, since doctor can change the alpha value at the test phase to only remove the background noise without affecting structures if they want. However, image domain denoising does not provide such flexibilities. From now on, I show you how our cyclic architectures can be applied for more various and advanced medical imaging applications. This example applies our method to the time of flight MRA. Time of flight MRI or TOF MRI is an MRI technology to restore vessel structure without using any contrast agent. This work was recently collaborated with the Seoul National University Bundan Hospital. In the case of time of flight MRA, subsamples are performed in the coronary direction, where the clinical diagnosis uses axial direction images. 
especially using maximum intensity projection or MIP data. Based on this observation, we create a new type of two-step unsupervised learning approach. Here is how we implement the network. The network is composed of two neural networks that restore the coronal direction and improve the image in the axial direction successfully. More specifically, A is a cyclical network along the coronal direction of the construction, and B is another cyclical network for the axial direction refinement using the recharge from the first net. In the case of the coronal direction, the sampling pattern is known, so the cyclical network architecture can be formulated with a single generator and discriminator. At this time, the important point is to make good use of the multiple data. In this study, we discovered that if we directly learn the sum of squares images, you can actually you, you can exploit the core information much better. After obtaining the sum of square images in this way, unsupervised learning is performed in, again in axial direction. There is no explicit sampling pattern or imaging physics for this uh, stuff. So two deep neural network generators and discriminators are necessary. This is an image resource based on our result and the conventional method. The picture above is a result using the compressing, which is a vendor solution. And the bottom one is our result obtained from the same case-based data. As you can see, you can get, we can get the much more clear and precise faster images. In this picture, you can see the advantage of the image uh, uh, proposed method more clearly. The left is low data we see from the side view. The middle one is a compressing band solution and the light work column is our method. We can construct much more precise best press structures, which was not visible by the uh, conventional band solutions. So far, we have talked about unsupervised learning techniques used for the construct, uh, to reconstruct MI images. In this slide, I talk about unsupervised learning method for ultrasound image restoration. In particular, what I'm going to show you now is a study on improving the image quality of low quality ultrasound images obtained from low-cost handheld system to become similar to high quality images obtained from expensive system. This is a true unsupervised learning problem as it is impossible to obtain pair data set. Based on our discussion so far, we now use our specially designed optimal transport driven cyclic architectures. At this time, we need a structure that contains the two generators and two discriminators. The reason for that is that the physics of making low cost images from high quality images are not actually defined, so we have to learn from the data. These are, these are the images obtained through actual experiment. The images at the top, la, uh, uh, top lows are the low quality images obtained from the low cost handheld ultrasound system. The second low is a conversion laser by a method to the high quality image similar to those obtained from the expensive equipment. You can see that image contrast has improved a lot. To verify this, we compare low quality image improved image and high quality image at the bottom lows using the uh, phantom data. As you can see in the result, the contrast is converted into a form similar to that of the expensive system. This example introduces a natural architecture, what we call the beta cyclic which we propose to remove metal artifacts from XVCT. In this case, the process of creating metal artifacts from artifact-free images is difficult to model accurately. In the case of metal artifact, striking artifact appears due to beam hardening, photon starvation, and etc., which are difficult to model. So we learn this part with a neural network. However, even in these cases, it is difficult to accurately create metal artifact corrupted images. Therefore, more weight is given to making an artifact free images rather than to the process of making our matter artifact. We found that this leads to the better artifact removal. 
We call this architecture as beta cyclogram because this structure is similar to that of the beta BAE or beta variation autoencoder, which gives more weight in the latent space. What you can see here is an example applied to the DENT SAT. The left most column is the input image with the matter artifact. You can see the striking artifact and shadowing artifact. In particular, if you look at the picture on the right panel, you can see that the artifacts are more visible in the homogeneous background tissues. The third and the fourth column are restored in the classical ways, such as linear interpolation and normalized mark. You can see that the remaining artifact that are still remain and also blood artifact. On the other hand, in the case of our method in the second column indicated by the arrow, you can see that the matter artifact are significantly reduced. Finally, I show you the MR motion artifact removal with the application of our new cyclical architectures. For example, in the case of the liver imaging, Transient CPM motion or TSMM artifact has been reported in clinical literatures after injecting contrast agent. In particular, it is observed a lot in the artery phase, which has a lot of influence on the diagnosis of liver cancer. Many studies are conducted to solve this problem. For example, there is a supervised learning technique called MARC using simulation data and unsupervised learning technique using the classical cyclical architectures. However, this existing study have not yet shown good results in the real liver imaging cases. To solve this problem, we use our existing research that the artifact by TSM appears as a sparse outlier in the phase encoding direction and use a bootstrap aggregation technique that diversify the random sampling in the phase encoding direction and add their reconstruction result together. One of the nice thing about this is that in order to train the neural network, bootstrap aggregation uh, was only performed using the MR data without motion artifact. This is what I mean in the sparse outlier in the case space data in the case of motion artifact. As shown in figure A, if subjects are moving during the 2D head scan, it leads to the phase error in the yellow lines. This appearance of the outliers are in the phase encoding directions. In B, which shows the 3D liver imaging, there are two phase encoding directions, phase one and phase two. If we apply the one different transform along the phase one, the resulting case space data has a phase outlier along the remaining phase encoding direction. Therefore, our goal is to apply the random sampling along the phase encoding direction in 2D case space data so that some of the outlier can be removed during the subsampling. Then the aggregation step of the neural network output can be less affected by the motion errors by still maintaining those image qualities. However, if we combine this booster aggregation with the supervised learning method, we observe the severe blurring artifact. To overcome this, unsupervised learning with the cyclogram was used in the training process. The important difference from the existing cyclogram method is that there is only one pair of neural network generated in this meter, and the remaining one has a determinic structure using the uh, determinic subsampling mask. The picture, shown in, uh, the picture shown is an example of applying the proposed method in the rear liver imaging. The left mask column is an input image with the motion artifact. The second column is the one with the motion artifact removed by the proposed method. And the third one is a result using the supervised learning method called MARC. And the last one is a classical cyclic architecture called cyclic medgar. You can see that our method showed excellent performance improvement compared to other existing method. What you see here is the liver cancer cases. Figure A is the input image with the motion artifact. Figure B removed the motion artifact by the proposed method. C is a supervised learning result and D is the classical Cycle again with John. In the case of supervised learning, severe blurring 
exist. And the classical psychic gun still have emotion and artifact, as you can see in this picture. In contrast, our methods presented in this study can be seen to remove artifact without any kinds of flaw. In summary, we show that gun is closely related to the optimal transport problem, and psychic gun was derived as an extension of optimal transport between the measurement and the image space. Depending on the knowledge of the imaging physics, we show the various form of psychic gun architecture can be derived, and we demonstrate the real application, which shows clearly shows the flexibility of our method and accuracies. With that, I'd like to conclude my talk. Thank you very much for your attention. Uh, thanks, Professor Yeo, for this wonderful talk. Uh, is there any, any questions? So I can see some question here in the chat board. Let me see. Okay, so can I read the question and answer by myself or? Uh, I think you can, Diva, you can uh, unmute yourself and ask a question. Uh, oh. You and there. Yeah, thank you. Thank you very much. Yeah. Uh, so my, um, my first question is that, is there, uh, when you showed uh, different variants of the um, second, with different um, number of component of the generator and discriminator. Um, is there a preferred training order of those generators at different um, uh, at different um, uh, variants? Because in the, the the conventional, the classic GAN, usually you train many times this discriminator and then you update the uh, the generator. So I'm asking whether there's a, like a pre preferred order as well in those variants. Thanks. Okay. Thank you very much for the question. So as far as you know, the, even though there is a one generator and one discriminant pair, pair, still we need to do those kind of thing. However, compared to the four or two generator and two discriminators, the, yeah, the training and also hyperparameter training and those things is much easier. So my students usually has a much quick, uh, provide uh, generator uh, better result and a much quicker result with this kind of simplified form rather than using the full deep neural network. Yeah. Does it answer your question? Hello? Oh, yes, yes. Um, and I think another, since I'm asking, um, uh, another question would be how to determine and evaluate the dimensions that really needed for the unsupervised learning. So is um, like the overfitting a problem also in unsupervised learning tasks? Could you say again about what do you mean by the dimension? You mean the network? Uh, yeah, the, the net, network, you, you uh, compress it in, into a, like a latent representation and the dimensions that needed for the bottleneck, how to determine how, okay. deep, like how wide it really needed. Okay, okay. So in our cases, actually, what we found is the network architecture is, does not matter too much in most of the cases. Most important thing is actually the loss function and this kinds of general training scheme. In fact, the psychic and architecture itself is also considered as a wrapper for the training. After that, the generator is, we just use one generator. In terms of generator, we actually use a very standard one, like a unit architecture for most of the application I showed you before here in this talk. I think most of the application, we just use a simple unit architecture, standard unit architecture with some modification, like uh, some modification might be, for example, with uh, some, some like, uh, uh, for example, tooling layers, instead of using the standard tooling, we use a uh, lossless tooling and those kind of thing. Other than that, so general, it doesn't matter too much about the generator architecture. In terms of discriminator, we most of the times, my students use a patchy gun discriminator. So my message here is, yeah, those kinds of architecture is not that important to, based on our experience. More important thing is actually how to arrange them together for the proper training. So here, I think there are a lot of talks about like uh, doing the optimization for the training to avoid the local minima and et cetera. In fact, this has happened actually, all those kinds of psychic GAN and GAN, that's actually how to train the neural network, the simple, one generators to obtain the desirable solution, I guess. Yeah, that's actually our understanding so far. Okay, thanks. 
Uh, our next question is from Anton. Uh, would you please unmute yourself? Yeah. Uh, hi. Um, can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you. Um, so it was very interesting explanation of adversarial loss in terms of uh, transportation problem. So my question is the um, uh, limitation of one Lipschitz uh, function. Um, mm -hmm. uh, how do you um, choose the function? I mean, uh, do the layers of network satisfy, for example, uh, this condition? Could you in a little bit explain it? And also, where is it published? So I am interested to read about it more. Yeah, actually, it's accepted by Siam General Imaging Sciences and in, it's in press, but it's already in the archive version. So the latest version is in the archive, so you can download it with the title. Uh, and for example, you can type the psych again and unsupervised learning, you can actually find the paper. And regarding your question about the one lips con uh, constraint, in fact, this has been quite uh, widely investigated in the machine learning literatures. For example, Vasha Stangan, they had to use uh, like a weight truncation and also the gradient penalty. They use a, we actually use a gradient penalty to impose a L1 lips constant. And, and that's actually the, we can impose this kind of gradient penalty. And also, uh, listen to people are using like a spectral normalization. Spectral normalization is also controlling the lips constant. So that's another way actually to control those things. Okay, thank you very much. Mm -hmm. So I have a question that you, you also use at the end, adaptive instance norm. So yes. does the norm batch normalization affects a lot in the performance? You mean the the Adain or just like a batch norm, uh, instant or batch normalization? What's yeah. your yeah. For example, yeah. if you are just, uh, yeah, the reason actually used, we use ADA uh, in normalization is actually to reduce the generator to single one. That's actually, and also to allow this kind of interpolation along the optimal transportation paths. However, other than that, if actually just use a simple unit architecture, most of times for the generator, my, my, my students usually use a mini batch size of one. In that case, batch normalization is not necessary. That's not that sensitive to those kinds of batch normalization or instant normalization. There is a small effect, but it's not critical. But the reason we use adaptive normalization is not for the network training, it's for the flexibility to just use one network for forward and inverse operator. Does it answer the question? Yes, yeah, thanks. Uh -huh. uh, due to the limitation of the time, so I think uh, we, uh, thanks, Professor Ye, for the wonderful talk. And we will have a break, a brief break until uh, ten five, and then we start with a new talk. Uh, thanks so much, Professor Ye. Okay, thank you very much. <laughs>